This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. This podcast is sponsored by listeners just like you. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll Everybody knows that all the great Rebbe's had one particular mitzvah that was really theirs. One that they put a little bit of extra energy into and took special care to really do it the right way. For one, it might have been davening. Another one, it was learning Torah day and night. Maybe it was the concentration that the Rebbe had when he put on his tefillin or the way he shook his lulav and sukkot. When it came to the Heliger, Reb Yehuda Tzvi Hirsch of Stretchen who was one of the top students of the Holy Rebbe, Reb Uri, of Strelisk, his special mitzvah was kashrut, kashrus, keeping the dietary laws. He was so strict about this that he would never eat in another person's home. And every bit of food that was brought into his home, he would personally examine it himself. He wouldn't eat meat unless it was prepared by his own butcher. And even when the butcher was shechting, the Rebbe would be there to supervise every stage of the way. One day, the Rebbe says to his Hasidim, Get the wagon ready. We're going for a ride. And so the Hasidim get into the wagon, and they start driving, and they go for a long, long time, until they reach this little village very far from where they were, a place they'd never been before. And on the main road, there was a small, run-down building. It looked like kind of a restaurant. And on the outside, it had a sign, Meat, eat here or take out. Quick, stop here, the stretchner said. I'm hungry, and I want to eat something. The Hasidim were looking at one another. The Rebbe wants to eat here. The Rebbe never ate out anywhere. Not at another Rebbe, not at another family member, not at even at his closest friend. And here, the Rebbe wants to eat here? This strange place in the middle of nowhere? Maybe the long ride affected him. They didn't understand. Rebbe, one of the Hasidim said, Are you sure that you said that you want to eat in this place here? That's exactly what I want, the stretchner said. Stop immediately! And the wagon stopped. And without another word, the Rebbe jumped off the side of the wagon and started walking quickly towards the restaurant, with the Hasidim following reluctantly behind. When they got inside, there was a woman taking orders for the meat. She wasn't dressed very modestly. And she said to the Hasidim who were sitting at this big, round table that had cracks in the table with food in it and dirt, and there was dirt on the floor, and everything was dirty, and there was old food on the floor. And she comes over and she says, Well, howdy, boys. It's nice to have you all here. And the way she behaved and she dressed, the Hasidim were so embarrassed. They all started looking in different directions. They just didn't want to look at this woman, especially the way she was immodestly dressed. But the stretchener, he looked at her like she was the holiest Rebbitzin he'd ever seen in his life. And he treated her with so much honor. My sweet young lady, could we please have the honor and privilege of ordering some of your excellent meat? Sure, Rabbi. That's what we're here for, you know. Meat for all. So how much meat do you guys want? The Hasidim couldn't believe the way their Rebbe was speaking to this woman and how she answered him with so little respect. Doesn't she understand that this Rebbe is a great and holy man? But the Rebbe just smiled, and he said, I'll have a big order for myself, and one for all of my Hasidim here. So the women went to get their food, and when she came back, the table was covered with grease and dirt. The Hasidim thought this was really disgusting. One of them said, Rebbe, if you're really so hungry, I think there's another place down the road. But the Rebbe silenced him with a look. And just then, the women showed up with their meat. And the Hasidim, they didn't know what to do. There was no way they were going to eat meat in such a place, because obviously it wasn't kosher. On the other hand, the Rebbe, who was so strict about keeping kosher, as soon as that meat touched the table, he said a bracha and started putting it in his mouth as fast as he could. One of the Hasidim noticed that there was a dog begging under the table, and he slipped him his meat. The others put pieces in their pockets, or found the garbage can, threw it out the window, threw it on the floor, whatever they could, they were, there was no way they were going to eat this meat. And then all of a sudden, the door to the kitchen bursts open. And this big, 
strong, muscly man comes out. His shirt is torn, and he's sweating and dirty, and he's got this knife in his hand, and he throws it in the air and then catches it. And the waitress stands next to this guy and says, Boys, I want you to meet my husband, and he's the shochet and owner of this restaurant. The Hasidim were mamish, scared to death. This man looked like a gangster. He looked like a murderer. And to think that they almost ate the food that was slaughtered by this guy. They pushed their chairs back. They were ready to run out of the restaurant. But the Rebbe, quietly and respectfully, he stood up and he held out his hand to the Shochet. And the Shochet, who just noticed the Rebbe for the first time, he says, Why, hello, Rabbi. It's so nice to meet you. And the Rebbe, he mamish started to tremble. He was shaking and he said, Please, sir, it's very important. Can I speak with you alone for a few minutes? So the Rebbe and the man went into a back room, and five minutes later the Rebbe came out, and his eyes were red and swollen. He silently walked back to the table where the Hasidim were waiting. He sat down long enough to say the last blessing for the food, and then he said to his Hasidim, Let's go. And they all left with the strange couple following behind them. And as the Stredner climbed into the wagon, he turned and waved to the Shochet and his wife, and they waved back at him, and then the wagon drove away. The Rebbe and his followers drove in silence for many hours, until they were almost back home. And then the Rebbe said to them, Okay, tell me the truth. Which one of you actually ate the meat? And they all looked at each other, and they didn't know what to say, so finally one of them said, Um, Rebbe, you know, the truth is I wasn't feeling so well, I had a stomach ache. Another one said, You know, I really care for animals, and this dog was so hungry. I just had to. The Rebbe said, enough. I know you didn't eat the meat and I know why. But let me tell you something. And it's important you know when things are high and when things are low. But that's not enough. The deepest secret in life is to be able to find the highest of the high, even when it seems like it's the lowest of the low. Now listen to me. When Avram Avinu went up to Hara Moriah to sacrifice Yitzchak, he carried with him a special knife for the Akedah. And that knife has been passed down from generation to generation and held by the head of the Lamed Vav Tzadikim of each generation, the head of the 36 hidden righteous Jews in each generation. And I don't have to tell you how holy the head of the Lamed Vav Tzadikim is. The owner of that restaurant is the head of the 36 hidden holy people of our time. And the meat that he gave us, the meat that you wouldn't eat, was slaughtered with the knife of Avraham Avinu. And I was begging him to let me touch the knife. And the tzaddik said to me, he was so sorry, but he couldn't do what I asked him. The only one that can touch the knife besides him is Eliyahu Elijah the prophet, who takes the knife after each one of the head of the 36 tzaddikim passes away and hands it to the next one. They're the only ones that can touch the knife. So I said to him, can you please let me see it? And so while we were alone in his room in the back of the restaurant, he showed me the knife and it said written on it, Ma'achelis shel Avram Avinu. This is the knife of our father Abraham. The Hasidim could not believe what they were hearing. What, what did they do? How could they miss such an opportunity? They didn't have faith in their Rebbe. And even worse, they relied on their own ideas of what holiness should look like. They were hung up on appearances. And so they missed their chance to taste real holiness. So as soon as they escorted the Rebbe back home, they quickly got in the wagon and went all the way back to that town to find the restaurant to see the holy knife. And when they got to the village, on the same street where the restaurant was, there was only an old boarded up shack, completely empty, no sign of life. Not the shochet, not the wife, not the restaurant. The Hasidim couldn't understand it, so they asked people that were passing by, what happened to the meat restaurant, the butcher shop that was right here? Oh, that place, it went out of business a long time ago. There hasn't been a restaurant there for years and years. You see, my sweetest friends, how many times do we look at somebody and we decide just because the way they're dressed or behave that that's what holiness truly is? Holiness might be standing right in front of our faces, and unless we have the right eyes, we might miss the opportunity, just like the Hasidim with Avram Avinu's knife. I lie, lie, lie.
To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com, H-A-S-I-D-I-C-Story.com.